let us hop into and someone in chat already asked for the deck profile i was gonna watch first because luke tyler fellow fellow Yu-Gi-Oh content creator as well has been tearing competition up with freaking uh cash tira won two regionals back to back with uh a freaking cybers cash tira list which you know uh whatever it doesn't have circular so we'll accept it they are streaming right now. Well, isn't that a coincidence? Either way, Luke Tyler, back to back 8 0 Cash Tira deck profile. Let's hear it from. What's better them. than one regional win at the start of the year? Two regional wins at the start of the year. Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a perfectly balanced day. I just got my fourth regional win of this season and the second one this year playing Heatso Cash Tira. Again, I went 8 0 in matches again and 16 1 in games, going almost completely undefeated. The deck was mostly the same, but the changes... So, even though it's, um, even though it's a, it's, it's called Heat Soul Cash Tira, I think the reality of things is, it's just probably, it just plays Draco Sack to make some link plays and end on a Heat Soul. But we'll talk about that. They'll probably show the combo. I did make worked very well. We're going to do a quick deck profile and then I will show some combos and answer some questions. Not the I most meta relevant regional, I have to say. Dude, the meta right now is all over the place. Unironically, like the, the power level of the format is relatively low and going 16-0 against like so many different decks is still impressive no matter what. Like the power level after the last ban list is actually not that high. The last video, There's a lot so of viable no stuff running ado, around. Enjoy! We have but i would love to see the fire king matchup i'm gonna be honest with you fire king right now is not that good it's not like the the, the fire king matchup is not the break point for whether a, a deck is good or not because the only reason i think people play fire king is because it's new and because it's relevant a month from now on people are investing into fire king because they know it's a good investment right now fire king is not that good the deck is being played a lot, but it's not topping a lot. Like it's like the it's like the most represented deck with the worst conversion rate out there. Like the deck is not that strong. It's a fine mid-range deck, don't get me wrong. I'm not calling it bad, but it's not like that good. It's not the benchmark for whether a deck is good or not. For unicorn, free Fenrir, free Ryzart. I play free for consistency reasons. One scareclaw cash. And I still play one ogre and prep. This is still very good. In fact, it performed even better than before. This card's very good for making minimalistic boards in four summons, which lets you play around nib. And prep is very good. It's very good at In general, I think Cash Tira is not a I mean, obviously it's not a dead archetype, even without a Rice Heart. People are still playing Cash Tira and still having success with it. Every once in a while. This is not the first time that Cash Tira is seeing success, right? It's not like, hey, uh, crazy guy brings cash tira to a regionals no cash tira is popping up here and there right because even though a art was a freaking custom card don't forget that unicorn fenry and birth specifically are really strong cards still and so deck has a lot of room for non-engine deck has some some kind of cool mid-range combos people are also not building their deck to avoid unicorn anymore that is a big deal you won't see double zeus's anymore you won't see multiple copies of a certain extra deck monster anymore because of unicorn so certain strategies really get fucked up by unicorn like unironically if your deck relies on a very important extra deck card and you only play one because why wouldn't you play one dude that unicorn hits hard beating sp and shifter is in that deck so because you can just bring back what they banish deck is scary and then onto the spells, we have the four planets. Free birth because this card is insane. It makes your bad hands better and it makes your good hands better. Free Fiosis, you don't have to play three of this, but you do if you play Desires. I play one Desires alongside free Prosperity because I don't fully trust the consistent- It might honestly be, it might be one of the better options if you don't want to play a fire deck unfortunately i don't think um i don't think it will play it'll be a budget option right it's not it's it's probably cheaper than fire decks but that's not a very low, very good bar to look at but wraith Soth is probably still money 
and Theosis might be as well. Fenrir is still not cheap, so I'd, I wouldn't say this is a budget option. The Sea of Kashtar. The Zayas has been very weird for me. Sometimes it's very good and it saves me. Other times it's really bad. Like, for example, one time I used the Aboriginal and it drew me into uh, Birth and Theosis when I wanted both of them, which was insane. And I used it another time and I drew Bosperity. Wait, Rice Heart? It's 15 great. bucks? No way. That's not true. You're lying to me. Hold up. What the? How? No shot. It has no reprint. I mean, yeah, but it's Rise Heart, man. What the hell? Oh god damn it, dude. Dude, the the Western the Western TCG market is just fucked up, man. I, like maybe even if they made all the cards commons, you guys would still pay eighty for Little Knight. I, I'll say it. It might be a lost cause. And then on to the hand traps. We are playing a hand trap deck, so we play 14 hand traps. Free shifter. Free ash. Free imperm. These are very standards. I still play two mourner because I think it is very well rounded. It hits a lot of matchups, and at worst, it makes floor because it is a level 3 tuner. I still play 2 draw because I think it's very good in this format. I don't want to play free vote because seeing it in multiple sucks and it does have conflictions with shifter. Against the decks where this card is very good vote, I do side into a third. I have bad news for you guys. I think next format is a main deck draw format. Sorry, I said it. I said it. I think next format is a main deck draw format. That one. Then the difference is that instead of playing the one Nibiru, I play one Bell. Reason for this is because Nib wasn't really performing too well for me. A lot of decks can respect Nib quite easily. Bell hits a lot of matchups, and the matchups where Bell isn't good, like in the mirror match, for example, it just makes Fleur, which is really good. I summoned Fleur a lot in this tournament because I have six tuners in the main deck and even more in the side deck. I still play three talents for going first. I think this card's very nice because if they hand trap you, you can hand rip them. If they nib you, you can hand rip them. Mm. If they Hold up, is this still main deck or is this side now? I think it's side, right? Dude, Talons has been so weird for me recently. Um, and it's also been very weird for other people that I've talked to. Like, Talons has been like... I mean, going second, because the situation in TCG right now is like every single deck in the TCG is not doing anything super crazy you know like i mean people are playing like fire king which has a relatively fair end board people are playing uh freaking uh like uh what's it called unchained like watered down unchained watered down tier limits watered down early all those kind of decks right so if you go second talents is usually really good because mostly you can just bait out something and then use talents and it's going to be insane because none of the boards are actually unbreakable. But then everyone is like going first. The card is weird sometimes because a lot of people are not playing that many hand traps, which is a very natural. De it's a very natural development that if if the boards that people are making are not that unfair. The next step is then, OK, well, then why do I need to play hand traps? Right. If I. Why do I need to play hand traps if uh, if my opponent is not going to make anything super crazy? Like, I can just play, like, a couple board breakers, talents, thrust, and my own engine and just play into it, right? Um, which, in return, then, is going to make the talents completely dead going first because you're not going to get hand trapped very often. Um, because the only hand traps that I really see people use very often is, like, there's a bunch of ashes, there's some imperms, then there's a little bit of droll, but usually in the side deck, some people still play nib. But it's very awkward. The chance that Talents is dead going first is relatively high. So I kind of like citing it for either like going first if you expect hand traps or going second because it's very good going second into almost any deck. Breathe. You can hand rip them. The card in general is very nice and against slower matchups... I do By the way, new OCG meta breakdown from the Road of the King. Let me guess. 30... 34.2% Fire King. I miss in going second because How close you was just I? draw two or take and it's really good. Even if they don't hand trap you, this card's still very good because as long as you survive their turn, you then have pretty close. Turn How much is it? It's it's, it's thirty five point six. Oh god, we were off by one point four percent. God damn it! 
cases is stronger than having it on turn one. And then I still play three Cosmic, four Fire King, and then these three Lightning Storm and Dust of Her Rescue Race, and then all six of these overlap into Labyrinth, along with Bell because Labyrinth is a very bad matchup. One question I had was to do with Labyrinth, and the answer to that is that game one's a bit rough. It's not the worst because Impermanent Shifter can be good sometimes, but we do of course side this out and then side into nine cards. Cash Tira does seem like the kind of deck where you just play a whole lot of non-engine in your main deck, and then all you do with your side deck is swap around the non-engine for what's good in the matchup. Like you side out the hand traps that are bad, side in the ones that are good. Uh, relatively simple side deck concept for Cash Tira, I think, most of the time. You're probably going to leave your engine completely intact whenever you're siding. Maybe side out Ogre and the Trap going second for some more board breakers, but usually you're just going to swap around non-engine. Ninth card is Econ. And then I there's one Econ one out Econ of the blue. And two Book of Moon. The reason for playing these three is because I expected there to be a lot of mirror matches. Um, and I wanted to also really? have two cards from these three to cover Pearly for sideboarding reasons, and one of these to cover Labyrinth. Both of these are very good in the mirror. Econ is better in the mirror going second, but I didn't want to play three Econ because I wanted Book of Moon to cover Pearly. And then onto the extra deck. One Shang. We make this sometimes if we have planets. Big Eye. Dark Arms. It's funny how Shangri era. Without a Rice Heart isn't even that good of a card anymore. Because usually what ends up happening is you have like Unicorn and Fenrir. Why would I combine Unicorn and Fenrir into Shang if it just turns into one Fenrir again? Like I just downgraded. I'm downgraded from uh I downgraded from Fenrir plus Unicorn into Fenrir plus Shangri era, which is not better. And Flow Metal, this card's insane. I make this card so much. Whenever you pass turn, when you put them on, like... I hold Ash for Shang. I want them to make it. Well, yeah, but a good Cash Tira player is not going to make it. You're going to hold your Ash, and then they just have Unicorn, Fenrir, Birth, and you're just going to have to play into that, and your Ash did nothing, right? So I don't know if that's the vibe. Like, a around a thousand life points. You summon this, they have only two effects, and one of those has to have the Flow Metal. Then the rank 7 for our turn 1 combo is Draco Sack. This is part of our Cybus combo because it summons two tokens, which then gets sent into Link Spiders, which then gets sent into G Golem, which then brings back a spider to make Heat Soul. Then we use our. Okay, so you make Draco Sack, you get two tokens, you make two Link Spiders, you make G Golem Crystal Heart, which brings back a Link Spider, which makes Heat Soul, draws you a card. Uh, obviously, you can't go for it if you have Prosperity. Well, you can make it if you Prosperity, but uh, you can't draw on your turn. And then you have the Draco Sack left over, so if you have one more body, I suppose you get IP as well. Extra monsters to make IP, or yeah. SP if we want to respect Nib. So we end on Draco Sack, IP, Fenrir Birth, or Draco Sack, SP, Fenrir Birth. And then the new addition that I play is Access Code, because we make this with the Cyburst combo. The reason why this is good is because resolving Draco Sack gets you to a point where you have this and Heat Soul. So you just turn both of these into access codes, which is three pops because you have fire, water, and earth. Okay. And there's even four pops if you want because... I, I personally see no issue with playing this because it's just an option you extra deck. It doesn't require any main deck bricks. Uh... Cash Shira doesn't really need its extra deck in large portion anyways. And just the ability to kind of pop off with two level sevens. Uh, that, I mean, that's, that just seems fine to me personally. Don't see, don't see an issue with that. That's like, those are the kind of things that I really like when it doesn't require you to play any bricks in the main deck. That's kind of cool innovation, right? Uh, so the only question here is, is this package... Because this package really gives you one line, right? It's like you play like four or five cards for one specific line. Uh, it's five plus the access code. So it's like six cards for this one Draco Sack line. Do those six cards, this one line, does it come up more often than all the other six options you would have instead? Uh, and I think you have enough room in the extra deck, honestly, to play all the options you need. So I, I, think, I think the answer is yes. I think that's worth it. You then banish itself. Which is really good because banishing itself then clears your monster zone to summon your cash chair monsters. And then we have Typhon. This card's very good, especially when you are X-Use locked by Theosis or Rice Hearts. 
One Zeus is very important, and then Fleur, which I make a lot because... One Fenrir does this, so why not do it? Uh, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Or does it? Which part of Rysart locks you into Exceed only? Oh, you, you just normal summon the Rysart. You just normal summon the Rysart. It's just a special summon. Right, 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 right. I always mix it up. I always think it's the Banish one. But okay, yeah. No, Fenrir does this. Fenrir does this if you normal summon the Rysart. Unicorn doesn't do it, though, because if you have just Unicorn, you have to go for Theosis. So basically, you can only do this... You can only do this if you don't open with Theosis, and you only get a draw from the Heat Soul if you also don't open Prosperity. Yeah. We have eight level 3 tuners combined in our side deck and main deck. This is the main combo, which is Fenrir and Unicorn, which is very easy to get to because you have four planets as well as three copies of each of these cards. So we're going to go summon Unicorn, Unicorn, grab Birth, activate Birth, use Birth, normal summon Fenrir, Fenrir effect, search Gagro Kashtira. Then we're going to put this to the side and overlay these two. And we're going to see some in Draco Sack. Yeah, you make Draco. You make effects. you make Draco Sack. Get two tokens. Link Spider. Link Spider. G Golem. Summon out Scareclaw. Bring back Link Spider. A Heat Soul. Draw and then these two make um, SP or IP. Yeah. Okay. To detach Unicorn. It's and nothing too crazy. We're then going to turn one. Token that's fine. Into a Link Spider and the other token into Link Spider and both of them into G Golem. Bring back Link Spider. These two make Heat Soul. Heat Soul. Draw card. It is true. If you have prosperity, you can just grab those cards and just throw them out, right? If you don't want to draw with Heat Soul. You can't draw with Heat Soul anyway, so you might not want to go for this line. So if you just... Um, if you have prosp, you just get rid of exactly those cards, right? Which makes sense. It feels crazy to me, such an underwhelming combo one. Okay, so what you have to realize is it's not about this combo. This combo is not what's making this deck good. Um is I think the main takeaway that you have to realize is that just the cash cards themselves are good cards. The, the ca just the concept of Cash Tira is that it has a lot of good one-card combos, like Fenrir, Unicorn, very efficient cards, very grindy cards as well, especially in Cash Tira Birth. So tons of comeback potential, very... Now without a Rysart, it still is a very grindy and mid-rangey deck, right? Um, it has a lot of room for non-engine, and that's it. It's just very efficient cards overall, with a lot of room for non-engine. That is Cash Tira, and the ability to play Shifter, right? And the ability to play Shifter on top of that, right? That is the reason why this deck is doing well. What you do with your monsters, I don't think it matters that much. Someone in chat said you can do like an ultimate Draco future line. I don't know that line, but maybe you can. Uh, you can also, honestly, you can just play a lot of hand traps and just leave your freaking Fenrir Unicorn Birth on the board. And that's also respectable, right? But um, I think that's just a takeaway. It's just efficient, right? It's just efficient, right? Because one Fenrir uh, gives you Heat Soul to draw two and, uh, and like all that kind of jazz, right? So I, I think it's that's the reason why this deck is doing well is because it's the power level right now in the format is relatively low. So it's not you're not too worried about other decks completely overpowering you, right? Like going shooting for some kind of card advantage, mid rangey board that just messes with your opponent a little bit and has great follow up is a working strategy right now. This board would probably not be good enough to hold off a complete like full power combo deck, but there's not that many of them right now. Then we use Devil Cash and Precious Axe to make a link too. If we are to not expect Nibiru, then that would be IP. But let's respect Nibiru this time, and we're going to instead make SP. And then SP can banish this. And this is th that's closer. an important skill, by the way, to realize when this sort of strategy is viable and when it's not, right? Because um, it's a it's it's somewhat similar to the runic combo decks because the runic combo decks never make an unbreakable board. They end on like you know Naturia runic ended on Baron Pass, you know. But it was a good strategy in the formats where that was like where you could actually get into a grind game. When there are decks out there that just kill you over that, then you obviously can't do that, right? But I don't think the format is in a place right now where if your opponent opens Heat Soul, Little Knight, one or two hand traps, you're living. You're you're living the turn. You're getting through. With Yusus, now we use Buff to summon and bring back Fenrir. So our end boards is Heat Soul, SP, Fenrir, Buff, and Better Mega Heat Soul, and we draw another card. 
if let's say at this point we have Theosis, before ending turn we go Theosis, use it onto Fenrir, summon an Ogre, Ogre will then add us prep, then we can use these two to make Shangri, so now we have Shangri, oh. Heat Soul, SP. Does uh, does G Golden Crystal Heart not lock you at all? I thought it I thought it did. I figured it did, but apparently it doesn't. I didn't know that. Birth prep and an extra draw of Heat Soul. And prep can bring back the unicorn from Bash. And then in a standby phase, Shang can summon a Fenrir from deck. So, so I am bored would be Fenrir Unicorn Shang, Heat Soul, SP, Birth, Prep, and then the two cards you draw off of Heat Soul. I mean okay. here, when you have a when you have a prep uh, a Theosis on top, that's so this uh, combo is that's, unicorn and right? worse into Nib, because we have to use the birth to summon a little bit earlier. But it still works. So we go Unicorn, Unicorn Effect, Search Birth, Activate Birth, Normal Summon Rise Start. It's important that we don't use the effect of Rise Start in hand to summon because if we do, then we'll exit slots. So we're going to instead Normal Summon Rise Start, use the effect, Banish Fenrir, maybe use three cards from deck. We use Birth, Summon Fenrir, and then Fenrir will search for Speckle Cash. And we use Unicorn and Rise Start to take Breaker Sack. Effect for Breaker Sack to get ourselves two tokens. Then we go once again Token into Link Spider, Token into Link Spider, and then both Link Spiders into G Golem, G Golem to bring back Link Spider, and then both of these to make Heatle. Then we go Effects for Speckle Cash, Summon itself, Banish the Unicorn from Grave. And then Dracosac and Speckle Cash will make IP, because even if they nib us, we don't have our birth summon anymore, so may as well play into it a bit harder with this combo. Then we have two draws from Heatsol, one on our turn, and then one on their turn. And then in their turn, we can use IP to summon SP. And one more thing yeah. to mention is that if you do have the here, you want to be using your Heatsol draw after you've done the... It's just very efficient off of one or two cards, and so you get you get carried by what the end board does, plus the non-engine you have in your hand. So I, I kind of like the concept, it's cool. The Ogre Search, because you have then decked them by two before you draw. In a similar way, you want to be drawing in their turn with Heatsoul after you have summoned from deck with Shangri. So what happens if you have your combo, but you also have Shifter? Because obviously, once you use Shifter, but then you can't type this combo. So it's at this point where you have a few different options. The first one is the simple one, where you just do this. You go, you Shifter, you corn, grab Birth, use Birth, normal Fenrir, Fenrir, grab Rise Heart, summon Rise Heart, Rise Heart, banish Ogre, and then Birth, summon Ogre, Ogre Search, Trap, Set Trap, Pass, and then Match Emerald. Which might look bad, but you have to consider that they're under Shifter, and under Shifter, they, they can't beat Fenrir Unicorn Ogre with most decks. Which of course, none of this is that scary, but you're essentially saying to them, you have to clear everything under Shifter, or else my follow-up is insane. So that is what I would normally go for. Uh, the, the one, okay. So what what we're talking about now is how do we play this deck uh, like when we have shifter obviously because if you have shifter you can't do the heat soul thing because the link spiders wouldn't hit the graveyard right uh this board do I like that board I'm not sure cuz that rice heart there is crying to get Zeus right you're just asking to get Zeus with that rice heart in defense position all you have, all your opponent has to do is, I mean, you have unicorn to rip the Zeus, so you can't activate a monster effect. You need to Zeus without an effect. You do need to Zeus without an effect unless they have imperm, uh, which preparation doesn't even answer the imperm because you just you you just get imperm before the preparation is up, right? Uh. So yeah, there's some decks that can do it though, right? I preferred the previous board to this. I mean, you, but would you really not use your shifter though? Is the other question, right? Because you definitely play shifter, I think. But there certainly are decks out there that can Zeus you. Like Pearly, you just auto lose to Pearly with that opener if they have two spells. They just go summon, summon, overlay, Zeus you, go, GG's. Um... You have, I guess you have two cards left in hand, right? Because this was a two-card combo and we had Shifter. So we have two cards left in hand. Ah. Are there lines where you can hold Shifter? I mean, you can't do the Cyber stuff without, like, you can't, you can't use your Shifter later. You would have to keep it in hand, which I don't think is worth it. I don't think keeping Shifter in hand to go for the Heat Soul line is worth it. Because, yeah, you're drawing two cards with Heat Soul. But uh, at the same time, you're you have one dead card in your hand now, so it's not even like a not even like you're drawing two. You're you're not netting two more cards than previously. You only get one extra card basically because you have one dead card as well. And Shifter is one of the most powerful cards in the game, right? You can make Draco Sack and make IP. Uh, well, that depends. Here, did we use we did use Rice Heart to special summon? Is the thing in this combo. Also, it so plays into nib. Unicorn, All the other combo plays shifter, into nib, anyways. So what you do is you go shifter, summon unicorn, search birth of unicorn, normal summon rise start, not the effect in hand because if you do, then you get XC's locks, then effects, banish Fenrir, and then you go birth, summon Fenrir, Fenrir effects, search up, follow up unicorn, mm. and be suit to make Draco Sack, and then effect of Draco Sack. I think the entire. They're showing a different line here, but I think the entire idea of that previous line, and I think I like it is that Shifter is such a powerful card that you don't need your board to be crazy. 
Um, your board doesn't need to be insane. You just have to avoid other ways to lose the game. And one way you could definitely lose the game after shifting your opponent, even if they're playing a deck that's weak to shifter, is if you get nibbed. For example. So making any play that combos under your own shifter feels weird because suddenly, even if your opponent is, a, is playing a deck that is weak to shifter, which is, let's be real, most of the, most of the decks are, um, most of the decks are weak to shifter, Giving them a win condition if they have a nib in hand just doesn't feel very, very good. Why are we watching Cash Tira combos? The deck plays itself. We are literally having a very solid discussion about different lines. And if you were just listening, you would probably learn something instead of just thinking uh, it plays itself. Because you're probably the first person to just get nibbed and lose the game if you played Cash Tira. And then these two tokens make IP. So then you have IP plus Panorama. If you want to respect nib, you could go for a similar line where you go Unicorn, Birth, Rise... Then rear, not summon yet, make Draco sack, uh, get yourself two tokens, and then use the two tokens to make double Link Spider, and then these make SP, then you can do SP Banish Shifter, which is actually pretty good if you have two Shifter, because then you can Shifter them a second time. And then you go Birth Summon because if they have Nib, then you have SP here, which is decent. But to be honest, if you want to respect Nib with Unicorn Rise Art, you're best off just doing normal cash tokens. So this combo isn't very side bursty. I would explain this that is Luke, yeah. Assist, Luke's been going 16-0 with Kashira at, the reason, at, at, at two regionals back to back. Okay. We don't have to go through every single combo. I think we understand the the overall idea of the deck, which I think is cool. I think it's a cool way to approach this kind of format. And I specifically do think that it is only good in a format like the current one we have. It's not very often that decks like this one are actually strong. Because there's been times in the past, after the Arise Heart ban, where I tried Cash Tira in a format, because I was like, hey, you got a lot of efficient cards and a lot of hand traps, maybe it's good enough. Um, I actually tried it for YCS um, Bologna, which looking back, I'm, I'm kind of happy I didn't play Cash Tira. But before YCS Bologna, it was, like, it was like that format where everyone played a bunch of hand traps and it was just like a lot of hand traps and engines clashing against each other. I was like, maybe a deck like Cash Tira can work in this environment because Cash Tira gets to play a lot of hand traps itself um, and it, it has a lot of efficient cards into hand traps. We all know like ashing a Fenrir, ashing a Unicorn doesn't feel great. They trade very efficiently into your opponent's hand traps. But I felt that for, for Bologna specifically, Cash Tira wasn't strong enough because simply put, like if your opponent didn't hand trap you, uh, and you just ended on your normal Cash Tira board, whatever that was. You know, there's different options. Most decks in Bologna would be able to play through it because Unchained was significantly stronger. Uh, Tier Laments was also significantly stronger. So the, the the deck's abilities to push for like your your deck's engine wasn't stronger than other decks' engines. However, I think right now Unchained significantly weaker. Tier significantly weaker. Um, Fire King, also, the engine is not that strong. Like, the, the, the Fire King engine is not that good. On top of that, most of the decks lose to Shifter anyways. So I kind of like the, the concept of, of this Cash Tira list. Uh, and it, 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 it really... I, I think, it, unfortunately, this kind of deck, I think, is going to fall off after Phantom Nightmare because I think with the new... I think with the new Snake Eye support, this kind of mid rangey approach does not really work anymore because the boards are the boards are strong enough to hold back Fire Kings now, but they are not strong enough to hold back Fire Kings after Phantom Nightmare, for example, right? Uh, which is not true for every single deck, right? Not not every deck is gonna die when the fire decks come out, but I think these sort of mid rangey style decks are gonna be overshadowed because these boards are not strong enough. I've seen all your videos on your Plus channel. I don't understand very well everything because I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh, but I like your content a lot. And the only thing I learn is to say Appalooza is cringe, whatever that means. Great content, best streamer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if that's your takeaway, you've got to... I mean, I guess that's a step in the right direction. I call that a success. That's not bad. That's all right. <laughs>